Hey, what's up guys? This is FiddleCubes here, and in this video we will be continuing to work on the 2048 game. And in this video, it's probably going to be a pretty short video because all we're going to be doing is getting the keyboard input to work. So, how are we going to do that? Well, there's different ways you could do that. Um, you could pass the key events straight from the game class all the way to the game board class, which is one way to do it. But the way I'm going to do it is have a static class called keyboard that keeps track of all pressed uh, events and can return if it's typed, pressed, or or released. Yeah, so okay. The way we're going to do that is go ahead and make a new class. and call it keyboard alright now because this is a static class we want to make a private constructor and then we need two static boolean arrays Okay. so for typed event you need to keep track of the previous uh, keyboard event I'll explain that in a moment so I have a pressed boolean array, boolean array, and it's gonna be. We're just gonna put 256. I'm not 100% sure how many keys are on the keyboard, so I'm gonna put plenty in there. Boolean array previous boolean array 256. All right. So we have those two boolean arrays, and uh, let's go beneath this constructor here. Basically, we're going to have our two type methods, public static void key pressed. So this method will be passed straight from the game class. So we want to set pressed at whatever the key code is. We don't get key code equal to true. And it's a similar thing for release. And you're going to set it to false because you're no longer pressing the keys. Now, this works well because it handles multiple uh, keyboard events. Normally, if you just pass the, the keyboard method, you can only get one typed key at a time, where this works with if you're hitting multiple keys. That's why I like to do it this way. You then need a update method. You can call whatever you want. It's basically you set all the previous in this update method you set everything in the previous array equal to the pressed array. So update. Now we're only gonna we're only gonna be dealing with four keys, so there's no point in looping through all 256 slots in the pressed array and setting them uh, set the previous array to that. So instead we're just gonna loop through four things up, down, left, and right. So 4 int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus. If i is 0, we're going to set previous at key events dot vk underscore left equal to pressed at key events dot vk underscore right, uh, left. Why would you set it to right? That doesn't make any sense. Anyways, you go ahead and copy that bit. Basically, you got to do this for all the keys. So, all right, now we're going to set that to one, two, three. Right, up, down, and go ahead and set them over here as well. Right. Up, down. Now, if you were to add in more keys, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is add in more things, or you could loop through the entire array. It wouldn't be too slow, actually. You know, you're only going through 256 elements, and they're just booleans. So it doesn't really matter. I guess this is just the better way to do it. All right. So that updates them. 
So if you were to press the keyboard, so you press down on the key, it sets that key press to true. You then it updates the game board. So the game board checks, okay, which keys are true? What should I move? And then at the end of the update loop in the game class, it's going to set all of the previous keys to the regular press key. So it's going to basically set everything as false. Or, or if the press is true, then everything's going to be true. So there's only going to be one time where previous does not equal pressed. And that's before this update loop. So that's when we're going to capture the key typed events. So we're going to do typed key events. So you need the integer for the key event. And we're just going to return if the pressed at key event does not is not true, but the previous state was true. So that basically means if you release the key, then for a split second, the pressed event is going to be false. And the previous event is still going to be true. It's then going to get updated, and the previous event will be false. And so the typed this typed method will only be called once. All right. So if you don't under if you don't understand that for whatever reason, you can just comment, and I'll explain it further. But it should be pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, in the update loop, we have nothing in here. So keyboard dot update. And let's just test this out. So, uh, okay, let's do if keyboard dot. Let's just say we want to see if the if the space keys are pressed. So key events vk underscore space. So if I hold down the space bar, this should be called many times. And we'll also do one for if typed is key event dot vk underscore q. Why not? Why not q? Uh, it's pretty random, but who really cares? All right, so this will just be for testing purposes. Just make sure everything's all good to go. I think it is. Uh, is the key list add key listener? Make sure this is in here. If this is in here and this is in here, then the J panel won't be able to receive key events. So make sure that's there. Run that. Bring our console up. And all right, so it's not hitting the space bar key. Let's just debug that for a bit. All right, so the reason is, it is you actually have to do something here. So this is this gets called, this method right here is what gets called when a key is pressed. So we just want to say keyboard dot key pressed and just pass that event there. And you got to do the same thing with released. All right, so that should work. The reason we don't use this key typed event for type methods is because this key. Uh, the key code for the key event on key typed, it'll say right here if I hover over this. Uh, will it not? All right, whatever. But what it basically um, does is it returns the key code that it returns is invalid. Basically, it's like negative one or something. So it's not equal to any key. So if you were to hit the space bar, a type event would would be fired. But it wouldn't know it's that that it's the space board, the space key. Anyways, now let's go test this. All right, as you see, I'm holding down space. I let go. Hold it down. Let go. And just like that. If you were to hit the Q key. All right, the Q key is not getting registered, so let's debug this. So space is working. Um, if keyboard that typed. All right, I'm gonna come back when I have this fixed, and then I'll explain what I did, and I'll just see you guys there. All right, I'm back, and uh, this was pretty stupid of me. Um, I made a big point of explaining how we're only using four 
keys and then like an idiot I use the Q key <laughs> so let's go ahead and do right or something like that this will this will work and this will update like this um yeah this better work otherwise I'm gonna be pretty pretty pissed alright as you can see if I hold down right it only is triggered on the release so if I spam it it's like that I'm not sure if typed events are on the release or on the press and then it's only once it works fine on the release so I'm gonna keep it like that if you guys want you can make it so that on the press so once you hit the right arrow key it will get called and then it would say don't call it again until you release and repress it but that's it for this video i guess i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye